let's do it. You collected your data. We know that beer is low. For low concentrations, the absorbance is directly proportional to the concentration. In that case, the proportionality constant is given here by the molar absorptivity times the cell path length, which is basically related to the length of your cubettes. You have this equation for Beer's law. We have to then plot concentration versus absorbance, get a nice linear fitting, and that's gonna be my standard curve. Then if you did this in the lab and you repeated the measurements, duplicates, triplicates, or more, then you can do run some statistics particularly the average and the standard deviation, we're we'll using the standard deviation to put error bars in your plot. Okay. First step, instead of using the range of cells, let's select wherever you have your data, under home, look for format as a table. Select any of these that you would like, and then make sure that you have my tables has headers. The first row in those tables are usually just the labels for uh, the data, and there you go. Now, one of the things that it's useful about the tables is that every single time you add data, either in a column or a row, Excel automatically expands the size of your table, keeping the same format and everything. So let's actually test it. We have now different measurements for the absorbance. What we can do is calculate the average of those absorbances, and this is going to be the average of the measurements that I have. And then you see, automatically created that or expanded that table. So let's enter the values. It's equal to average, and then give the values, these three absorbances. And this is what I like about the tables. Just hit enter, and automatically you fill up all the rows in this column. And this is particularly useful when you have a very long set of entries. Now, be consistent with the measurements. Make sure that your absorbance in this calculation in the spreadsheet is also given to three decimal places. Next step, we have to correct for the background signal. What is the background signal? For the concentration zero molar, you will be expecting that you get zero absorbance. But your instrument has this background signal, some response that you have to subtract from the other measurements to make that correction, okay? Now, let's call this one absorbance, and this is the one that we're actually going to be plotting. Equals this minus the background signal. Now, this is very important because the background signal is always the same. It's not going to change. For that, we're going to be using absolute references with this dollar sign. The way that we do that is we put dollar signs around the letter designating my cell. There you go. Hit enter. Automatically fills it up. And you can see that in every single case, it's always taking minus E17 as I go through those cells. So this is a, an absolute reference, fixes that value. Good. The next step is going to calculate the standard deviation for my sample. And this is a standard deviation on the absorbance. We're going to be doing standard deviation. Pick this one that has to do for a sample. We have only three measurements. So select that. Close parentheses, hit enter, and again, make sure that you are consistent. There you go. We have everything that we need to now construct the standard curve. For that, another thing that I like about tables is that instead of selecting the range of cells, which will be very annoying if you have a very long list, you can only just go to the header, and you can see how the mouse is changing from the cross to this arrow. The moment that you see the arrow, you can just click your mouse, and it's going to automatically select all the elements on that column. Go to the absorbance that it's been corrected for the background, Make sure that you have the arrow, select all those. Now you have these two columns selected. Go to insert, and we're going to insert this XY scatter plot. Now, another thing that I'm going to suggest to you in general, make sure that you format all the elements on that graph such that it's easier to read. I'm going to be doing it here. I'm going to speed up the video. You can see what I'm doing. The next element that we can add is the trend line, linear regression. So we can do it in two different ways, chart design, add element, trend line, or we can just right click, you're going to see this menu, add a trend line, both of them are going to be exactly the same. So now you can see in this case, we have linear regression, make sure to click display equation, display R square, and for this particular example, given the equation that we have and the correction of the background, we can set the intercept to zero, that's going to be my equation, this is going to be very important. Now. I'm going to speed up the video again, more formatting. Excel is going to give you the equation of that line in terms of x and y, but really y is equal to absorbance, the slope that has units times the concentration with the compatible units. So when you multiply them, you get an absorbance that is dimensionless. This is a much better way to represent this equation. Not y and x, but absorbance and concentration. 
Next element is going to be adding error bars to my plot. Select the data. Let's go to chart design. Add element, error bars, standard deviation. Now Excel automatically gives you a um, fixed value of one unit that has nothing to do with the values of your standard deviation. And also we do not have standard deviation on the x-axis. So we're going to delete that. And the y-axis, the absorbance, that's what we're measuring. Uh, double click on that. And for us, pick costume, specify value. For both above and below, select the standard deviation for both of them. So now you can click OK. And now you can see the error bars. Now again, I'm going to speed up the video. Now, we are ready to use the equation that we got from the linear regression in order to calculate the concentrations of the unknowns. We can just directly use and solve for the concentration. But instead of doing that, I'm going to show you yet another function in Excel that it's going to be the statistics for your linear regression. This function is going to give me a series of values, all of those in here, that are going to be useful uh, in other circumstances. So if you're watching this video and you need any of all of these functions, definitely this is what you would like to do. Or in an intro class, most likely you're going to just require the slope, the intercept, and R square. But with these functions in Excel, we're going to be given values for standard errors and also some other statistical variables that are going to be very useful whether you're doing, for example, statistics or analytical chemistry, physical chemistry, etc. So this so function is going to return an array of values. So we have to select all the cells where we want this function to uh, put these results. And we start typing. The equation is, or the function is line st. The first series of values that it's uh, asking us is the y-axis, the absorbance in our case. The x-axis is going to be the concentration values. Then the next is going to be uh, an option of false or true, depending on how you're calculating the intercept. In our case, remember that we force the intercept to be zero. So for us, it will be false. And finally, false or true. And depending on the version of Excel that you have, you may need to do Control shift enter Now, you have all these different values. You can notice that the intercept returned as a value of zero, as we were expecting, because we enter false in here. And that's why it doesn't even calculate the standard error. For us, we have the slope with its associated standard error. We have also the R square value. These different values exactly the same as you had before in the linear regression for the trend line. In order to calculate the concentration, our equation is telling me it's going to be equals the absorbance divided by the slope. But remember that this one is a constant value, so we have to use an absolute reference. We have to put uh, dollar signs around the letter label for myself. And then because this is not a table, I have to come here and click and drag in order to copy the function. If your numbers are very small, sometimes they're hard to read. So I will suggest you that in, this, in these cases, you use uh, scientific notation or prefixes. In this case, instead of molar, micromolar, we can do equals molar concentration divided by this conversion factor to absolute reference dollar sign around the label, the letter label for your cell, enter and then click and drag if you don't have a table. And basically we are done. Now we have completed everything that we needed for the standard curve, in this case for Peter's Law. Please let me know if you have any questions, but for now, good luck.